Hello, everybody. Welcome to Women Seeking Wholeness. I'm Sheree Burton, and this is a podcast for women who long to feel, express, and be who they truly are. We did have quite a heavy episode last week uh, where we talked about women healing in churches, and I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. And we also had a YouTube video version as well that you can go find on my YouTube channel, and the links are in the show notes for last week. But it's really interesting. I just wanted to follow that up with a blog post comment that I received from an anonymous bishop, an anonymous Mormon bishop. He said, I'm a bishop in the church and agree wholeheartedly with your thoughts, inspiration, and right to seek out and develop the gifts of the spirit you have. My family and I entered the quote unquote energy healing world a little over three years ago. It has been instrumental in helping my autistic son. It has brought my wife and I back together to connect in ways we had lost. It's a very long story, but energy work literally saved my life about two years ago where modern medicine could not detect why I had lost 40 pounds in two months and was on a very sharp decline. And he puts this in all caps, energy, holistic work from a gifted man and woman saved my life. No one ever promised me healing. However, the work I happily paid them to do put me on the path that saved my life. For two years, I taught the concept of by their fruits, you shall know them to people who were investigating the church during my mission. By my own discernment, I know truth. I know my heavenly parents voice, both of my heavenly parents. I know my truth and some committee in Salt Lake City will never take my personal revelation from me ever, exclamation point, which is quite a strong statement for a bishop to say. And he goes on to close. I now feel very fortunate that I am in a religion that receives ongoing direction. That means we can change and we will change because the truth is always undeniable. I do wonder how much patience many members can have for that change to come. However, I choose to be a believer and influence the necessary change inside the church and the gospel that I love. I also honor and respect those who can't do that at this part of their individual journey. Love and light to all of you wherever you fall in the spectrum, honor your voice and honor your truth. I, for one, am one man who genuinely honors the free agency and many gifts we all have been given by our heavenly parents. Anonymous Bishop, whoever you are, I completely respect and admire you and am grateful that you chose to reach out to me and comment on that blog post, Women, Healers, and Churches. That said, we're going to move to this episode, Dressing As You Are with Jordan Stolk. Now, she is the founder of Mikado, which is a concierge personal shopping firm that focuses on simplifying the process of buying clothes and teaching people how to build a winning strategy for their style. Jordan's shopping strategies and wardrobe techniques have been featured on many major news channels and outlets. She's an e-entertainment red carpet fashion content creator for award-winning shows, including the Oscars, Grammys, Golden Globes, and Emmys. She knows what she's talking about. (laughs) And we're going to dive into just like how the clothing that you put on affects you, affects how you think, feel, and behave, and it may surprise you. Jordan, I'm so grateful that you've joined me today. Shuri, thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful to be here with you. You know, we're going to dive into something today that I'm very passionate about. You obviously are. And I yes. love that you out to me because I think these conversations about women and adornment or women in the process of beautification has been so culturally misconstrued. Absolutely. And it's like... You know, especially in, you know, I did an episode last week about women in religion and pardon me, I just, you know, I had to like go into a space to give myself the permission that it's not materialistic. It's not vain. It's not selfish to like clothing, hair, makeup, all of that. Like, did you, what's your little, if you can just give us a mini journey into a snapshot into like how you came to that realization as well and what your personal journey is around this. Yeah, well, you know, I com- I'm completely on the same page as you, so I love that we are aligning for this conversation. And, you know, my own journey is that I spend a lot of time not feeling at home in my body, struggling with body image, self-image, um, a lot of those things that I think that women are struggling with. And through a lot of, you know, conscious mental work, I was able to see what the thought patterns were, you know, 
what was real, what wasn't real, what I was projecting onto myself. And then I started to use clothing as a way to heal and to help me feel at home in myself. So it was, you know, finding the clothes that represented who I was, but also the clothing that made me feel so comfortable. And I use this word at home a lot. Yeah, I love it. The, yeah, just... <laughs> This is your home. Your body is your home on this earth. It is, yeah, and we want to inhabit it fully. And I think that what I see in a lot of women and what I often saw in myself back then was that perhaps I was using clothing that, this is a word we use too much also, but alignment, like it did not align with who I truly was on the inside. And so it didn't feel right. I did not feel at home. I felt either like an imposter or like I was trying to hide. So clothing was mm -hmm. used in one of those two ways. And then when I could start to really get into what are the things that make me feel good? And then what do I, how do I operate outside in the world with other people and in, in my relationships and my job and my career? How do I operate when I do start to feel at home in myself? And that was the transformative piece for me. And in my work, I just feel like if there's any way that I can help other women experience those feelings as well, I'm, you know, that is what it's all about. And so when you say adornment, I love that word because it's not something superficial, it's something mentally transformative. And, you know, I would love to bring this to more women to help them see that there is such a beautiful state of being or a way to feel when you're focusing on that. Yeah. You know, um, I was just having a conversation um, with a lady who does my lashes. That's something I splurge mm -hmm. on. <laughs> she Absolutely. actually comes to my home. Great. She comes to my home. Yeah. And, um, so good. Um, it's just, it's just a fun little, yeah. little ritual for myself. And, and it saves me time to do my mascara. I like time. Totally. You know? um, but anyway, we were having this conversation and, um, she was talking to me about how, you know, she's dating this guy and they've been together for a while and he really loves to shop for her. And actually Dimple and Mary, Dimple Thacker and I, who, who, uh, she was on my, she's my partner in the fix your marriage course that we do together. Yeah. Her husband shops for her as well. So we had a whole oh. conversation on my podcast about this, but some men, um, some men, it's so important to them to, for for them, it's almost like they intuitively know that their partner, wife, girlfriend, whatever, will feel better in the relationship if together they are focusing on her own adornment or her, mm -hmm. her the way that she presents herself. Presents, and yeah, yeah, and it's like I was telling her, I was like, there's so much psychology to that. Yes, where we have resistance, we have this inner resistance going on, like we walk into our closet every day. And depending on whatever mood we are in when we're ready to get dressed. And sometimes it's like, Oh, what do I have going on today? What do mm -hmm. I need to wear? Right. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's like, um, how do I want to feel today? I think that's yes. the most important question. At least when I'm walking into my closet, um, I'm, I'm kind of anal like this because I, I watch the Marie Kondo stuff and yeah. I, <laughs> you know, I, I've grouped my clothing to, according to colors yes. and patterns and I don't wear patterns a lot, but anyway, so I will walk in my closet and I've, I've got, you know, my jewelry and accessories in one space. And then I've got my clothes and I was like, I, I will feel drawn. And I swear to you, it's because of um, the color spectrum and the energy yeah. of colors, mm -hmm. but I will literally feel drawn to certain colors on certain days based on the emotional state that I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, she and I were talking about this and she's like, well, I don't know how to feel that he wants to get is like, I don't want to know if I should take it as an affront that he d doesn't love the way I dress. And I was like, well, mm -hmm. maybe it's not so much that as it is, you know, he, you're his queen. Like he wants yes. to spoil you. Oh and, my gosh. And yes. Yeah. So I just think it's so interesting that it's, there's a direct relationship to what we choose to put on yeah. our bodies and the way we feel. Yes. Oh my gosh, a resounding yes. And I just want to applaud her husband for involving himself in that process. I think that's such a beautiful story. And, 
you know, as you said, when you go into your closet, there is often a draw to certain things. But for some women, there is, you know, there might be nothing in their closet that makes them feel that way. There might be nothing in their closet right now that brings out that inner light that they have inside that maybe they're not giving themselves permission to focus on that area of their lives. And so when they are putting clothes on their body, they're operating from a place that does not make them feel incredible or that does not make them align the inner, you know, amazing qualities that they bring to the table with what's on the outside. And you know, yeah. that that makes me very sad because there is this beautiful opportunity to just fully embody ourselves and reflect on the outside how fantastic we are on the inside and to feel that every day. I think that's just such an opportunity for women. Right. I agree. Just as a little um, insert here into my story, um, some of my listeners are new and may not know this. And actually, I don't know that yeah. I've talked about it a lot, but... Uh, when I was um, a young mom with a two-year-old and a nursing baby, I was drowning in depression. Yeah. And I noticed this like frumpiness because I'm nursing. I've got a two-year-old. It's mm-hmm. just like not at the top of the priority list. Too. Totally. Um, I see some of these mothers today on, on social media who just had a baby. Oh, and my they gosh. Like little yeah. ones and they look amazing. And I'm like, yes. oh, my gosh. You know, yeah. I'm glad I didn't have to deal with social media back then. But right. anyway, this was like 1999. Yeah. Um, and I, I was like kind of drowning. And anyway, my sister... My sister Shauna, who's now passed away, but um, we were super besties at that time. Our kids were the same ages. And she called me up one day and she said, um, Shri, I need you to look up something on the internet for me because it's down and it's on the Oprah site. So I go to the Oprah site. I'm looking it up for her. I see on the sidebar, these are upcoming shows. If you have experience in any of these shows, please, please reach out. And one of the one of them was living with your in-laws. And I happened to be living with my in-laws. My husband had temporarily lost his job and got sick. And so we were living with my in-laws and I, it was, it was a trying time to say the least. I can only imagine. <laughs> and so anyway, I reached out just, I was like, who's going to read this, right? Like they probably get a billion emails. So literally within two days, a producer called me and she's like, we would like you to be, um, we would like you and your husband and your in-laws to be live on the show next month. And we would like to set up cameras in your home uh, through a local camera crew. And I was like, wow. what? <laughs> no one That's even knew crazy. that I <laughs> So I, I furiously like, okay, how do we, it was healthy. Actually, I, um, what had happened is I was venting one day and I just started listing all the things that were bothering me about living at my in-laws mm-hmm. and I put it on a piece of paper and my husband was, re- I told my husband to read it and he was reading it. I wasn't there, but my mother-in-law looked over his shoulder and was reading it alongside him. And I was just horrified. No. So anyway, we had a <laughs> feeling thing with it. The point is I was so excited to go on Oprah. So were my in-laws. So was my husband, you know, again, I have a nursing baby who I had to take with me oh my gosh shopping like what am I gonna wear I'm going on Oprah right yeah so I I was like I've always had it just like every female probably like I you know I I love the idea of looking and feeling beautiful yes and smashing and striking and whatever that needs to be in my own in my own way and temperament Mm -hmm. so I picked what I thought would look good Mm -hmm. and at that time in my life because I was in depression I was yeah. Um, struggling with weight and confidence and energy. Mm-hmm. So here I am on live. It, everything went fine on Oprah, but this is back in the day where it's like you, it, it went live. So I didn't even get to watch it. My mom recorded it for me on a VC, okay. VCR. I <laughs> like, love it. Yeah. I go home, I watch it. And I was just like, what? <laughs> yeah. Who is that? Yeah. I mean, it was nothing blatantly like, of course, but it was like, this is, this is not who I was born to be on express. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I remember, a disconnect. Uh, yeah. And after that, I just, I just prayed so hard. I, I, I mean, I could count on one hand how many times I've said such a passionate prayer, like help me. I'm yeah. drowning God. What's yes. something like, yeah, I was born for more than this. I, I don't want to portray, portray this way. I don't want to yes. feel this way. So the answer came and I'll keep this really short because it's going on too long already, but the answer came of all things 
as uh, participating in the Mrs. Utah pageant. I didn't even know there were pageants for married women. Yeah. Uh, my friend took me to an event a couple of days after that. And there was a Mrs. Utah speaking and she was a mother and she was so eloquent and so classy. And she was wow. speaking out about a cause she believed in. And I thought, wow, that's really, but no way would I ever do that. Right. And um, it just kept coming to me and coming to me finally my two-year-old son handed me the flyer at, at, at the house. <laughs> I got chills through my whole body. Oh my so I called producer. She talked me into doing it. I dropped 40 pounds. I got mentors. I placed in the top 10. It's there incredible. was another, there was a, a director in the audience at a different married pageant for women who contacted me. And she said, I think with a couple of changes, you could do really well. I did it again and got second runner up. I went through a huge like metamorphosis, massive, like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I had another baby and I was like, okay, great. Check that uh -huh. off the bucket list. I, yeah. I did a pageant because I'd always loved to watch pageants. Did you ever love to watch pageants when you were younger? Like, you know, I grew up in Canada and they are not a thing there the way oh, they really? are here. Yes. <laughs> But well, I'm so I, I'm so fascinated by them now. But <laughs> growing up, it wasn't on our radar there. Yeah. So I was 30 at that. I just turned 30. Yeah. Um, when I first did the first pageant, and so what happened was I ended up winning. Wow. After I had the the next baby, and and it just set me on this course for inner outer refinement and carriage and beauty and poise and graciousness and eloquence and um i never mastered any of it i'm still in the process of like what does that mean for me but what was powerful about it was i i was under scrutiny i mean i was really under scrutiny by a lot of people why would a married woman throw on a swimsuit in Perry Hills and get on a stage like what kind of you know what are you trying to prove yeah. I, I got a lot of that from other women yeah. not men <laughs> wow yeah women. yeah religious women so go listen yeah. to everyone to the previous episode and you yes. know where I'm going with that yeah but it was like I knew in my heart that this was part of my path and it was part of my divine tutorial if you will yeah um and so I ended up directing and producing pageants and coaching a lot of women who and girls, teens and, mm -hmm. and young adults who went on to win pageants. So most of my 30s was spent um, really diving into what does it mean for a woman? And I got and I paid for a lot of money for trainings like um in how to dress for your energy type and things like that. Yeah. I got into energy psychology and and so it was like how, what what is it when you're talking about that inner and outer alignment? Um, what is the magic that can happen when you're so in touch with you? And like you said, you are inhabiting your body fully. Yes. When you can do that, and it is a practice, it comes with breath, breath and yeah. presencing and all that. Mm -hmm. But when you can do that, the magic that happens is that you now know intuitively what you like and don't like, and you're not attached oh. to what other people think. And that's kind of how yes. you started your, your discussion, yes. your own journey. It's like, what do people think I should be wearing? And right. what feels aligned for me? <laughs> um, oh my gosh. You just, you, you just summarized it perfectly. That's exactly what it is. And I think there is this misconception sometimes that when we're focusing on the outer, like maybe some of those women were thinking when we're focusing on the outer, there's a superficiality involved or, you know, it's trivial or it's not what we should be thinking of as women, as we're aging. And I just think that's missing the mark completely. Like there is such a metamorphosis, as you said, that happens when we can come into our own on the outside. And it's not about trends or what other people think we should be wearing or any of that stuff, but it's about embodying yourself fully and finding those things that really allow you to do that. Yes. Beautiful. And I'm glad you brought up age because, you know, I'm in my early fifties. I just turned mm -hmm. 52. Yes. And I was like, I'm kind of at that stage where I'm like, well, I don't want to wear like the, a lot of the trendy stuff. It just doesn't yeah. speak to me, but I don't want to yeah. look frumpy. And I, right. I think frumpy is such a charged word. Like it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let's, before we talk about um, age and, and I also want to get into weight because that could be a barrier yes. for a lot of people too. Yeah. Um, 
Let's talk about the shame that can be perpetuated when maybe you don't have, you know, the resources to go out and buy the clothes that speak to your soul, Mm -hmm. or maybe you do feel frumpy and you feel stuck and you don't know how to get out of that. Yeah. And you don't want to, you know, just pick an outfit online that looks good on someone else, but you really want to, to kind of cultivate that art for yourself or that maybe awakening. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I absolutely a lot of self shame that gets perpetuated. You're like, I must not have it. I'm, I must not have that gene or that that gene. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And so I I meet a lot of women who, and I did, and I did attract a lot of women into my space when I was doing a lot of image coaching. Yeah. um, Who felt that way. They were like, Oh "Oh, yeah. There, there's so many women who feel this way. I hear it all the time. And the, and the really interesting or, you know, exciting thing is that everyone has it in them. It just needs to be awakened. And I think as soon as you start working with somebody in this capacity, you see it. Everybody has it in them. Mm-hmm. Um, but be, let's say being the woman who was going to be on Oprah and she grabbed something at the last minute before putting, before starting this journey or before putting any real thought into how do I want to show up or how do I want to create my external self? Um, that's often why there's a problem or that's often why women will say, I don't have the style gene because they haven't done the preliminary work. The first step is not let's go shopping. It's not like, let's just find, you know, it's not, strike me when I'm out. Exactly. <laughs> but that's what so many people do. And you know, that's not how it works. There's, you know, we need to backtrack that and start with really the inner, the inner dialogue of who am I? How do I want to show up in the world? How do I want to present myself to other people, but most importantly to myself? And mm, I love that you said that. Can we just, can we just stop yes, there and marinate course. on that? Of course. Sometimes we have the mindset of people pleasing when we're looking mm-hmm. at what we want to wear instead of how will what did you say? How do I want to feel for myself? Right. Yeah. We, absolutely, yeah. How do I want to feel for myself? Present to myself. Um, that's the biggest one because while we may want to look a certain way as we exist in the world, the biggest piece is how do I feel when I present in this way? Because that's going to shift everything. When you feel really at home, really certain, even really confident, you know, we all have good days and bad days in that area. But when we feel really empowered and confident in ourselves and the way we present ourselves, we just operate in a very, very different way. So the importance of dressing in a way that aligns for you is much more significant than dressing in a way that aligns for other people. Mm, Beautiful. Mm-hmm. So that's first, that's foundational. Who am it I? Yeah. How do I want to feel, f- show up for me? Because I yeah. honor me and, and I'm wanting to align this inner me, mm-hmm. with this outer, right? Yeah. Okay. So then after that, where does that land? So then, yeah, the next step is really paying attention to the thoughts. So looking in our closet and paying attention to what are the things that are hanging in here that do not make me feel good. So when I put them on, I might notice that I'm operating smaller. I'm hiding myself. I'm trying to make myself less visible. And I know it, you know, it sounds silly to say, but a lot of people have those things in their closet still. They may have a story around, I spent money on them or, you know, whatever the reason is. So I hold on to them. Um, But paying attention to the things that don't make us feel good is the next step and getting rid of them and then paying attention to what are the things that, what are those go-to things that when I put them on, I just notice my being is different. My presence is different. I'm operating Mm -hmm. at a higher level. And which is also a process of going in inside. It totally is. So you're taking like, you're taking like almost like a talisman. Yes. Right. And you're putting it on your body because it can represent that for you. Yeah. This process of adornment. And you're like, Ooh, how do I nestle into this? Um, yes. I want to 
put that on pause for a second because yeah. I want to pick your brain about something. So I have t- kind of two sides to my style personality, I guess yeah. I would say. Yeah. One is I love softness. And I think mm-hmm. it's also because I have two sides to my personality. Yeah. <laughs> like in general. But what do you mean by softness? Like so tactical softness? Cozy and like, you know, um, more subdued and more comfortable. Yeah. And, and then the other side is, and then like, but sometimes there's a, there's a tendency that I would just throw on sweats or yoga clothes or whatever, yeah. just in that coziness, which is okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I'm talking like just soft, yeah, soft colors, soft, yeah. soft fabrics. fabrics. Yes. And, and then the other thing is like more structured, like, yeah. um, I don't want to set necessarily say a business suit, but mm-hmm. just um, more tailored, I guess. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and so I found when I'm just talking out loud. <laughs> like, no, I, I found that when I merge them, because they are part of me, both of them. Like if yeah. I'm too much on the soft side and too much on the structure side, I can I can go to extremes. But yes. if I blend them, yes, then I feel like I'm more me. Totally. And I've gone to some, or I've talked to some people who are super purist in like, find your main energy and only dress that way. Like for instance, there's the four seasons. Are you a summer, fall, winter, or spring? Right. Um, are you in the color code? Are you blue, yeah. or yellow? Or, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. There's so many like of these personality typings. And I think we just get locked into, Yeah. gosh, no. if I... Yeah. We get too purist in, in some. I, yeah. I, it's too, there's too much rigidity there. It's, I don't think we can, you know, really, I love the idea of it. I love the notion of it, but I think we can't compart- compartmentalize to such an extreme. And, you know, I think there are days that we might be drawn to the softness. The next day we might be drawn to the more structured and sometimes it's a balance in between. Um, I will have people ask me oftentimes, like, can you tell me what category I'm falling into? And I think when we attach too closely to something like that, we're not paying attention to where our soul is drawing us towards. We're trying to fit into a box rather than align with what's really true to ourselves. Right. Beautiful. Okay. Well, let's follow this. So we go in and we say, okay, who am I? How do I, what do I want to do for myself today? How do I want to feel Mm -hmm. dress for me? Not them, Mm -hmm. Um, which helps us be literally comfortable in our own skin and which boosts our confidence. Mm -hmm. And then we pay attention to the thoughts we're having as we're looking at what's hanging there. What doesn't make me feel good. Let's take that out of there. What what am I doing? What am I wearing? Because I think it looks good on everyone else, but not necessarily feels good on me and then what yeah so then what what I'll often have somebody do is start to get ideas because we're so familiar with what we've been doing especially as we get older we may have been dressing a certain way for the last 20 years so let's start to see where interest draws us and we'll do exercises maybe we can look online look out into the real world um and who really speaks to us. And it's not that we're recreating somebody else's style, but we need inspiration to to draw from. So we'll look at other ideas and we'll see, you know, what works for me, what doesn't. And then how can I try to maybe pull from my closet what I already own? We're not, we haven't even shopped here. So how can I pull from my closet what I already own? And use some of that inspiration that I'm getting from photo references and try to make that my own and then do a trial and error. So we're playing now, we're trying to get out of our comfort zone and we're doing a trial and error to see what works before we ever start shopping because there's no, there's no reason to start spending money on something until we're really clear on what we're doing. Um, And then once we've done some more of the trial and error and getting ideas from other people, then I would say slowly start to shop, slowly start to bring in new pieces. Um, One, you know, once the message or the foundation is more clear. Sure. Awesome. Okay, great. Well, that feels doable. Um, Let's come back to, yeah, because it could be an adventure, right? 
like not only is it doable but it it can be exciting it doesn't have to be drudgery it it can can be yeah it can be totally exciting and i think that the step that people actually really have fun on is the exploration step so when they start to go look for ideas you know when they start to give themselves permission to see something you know often i'll show photos to women and i'll often this is like the line that always comes they'll point to stuff that they like and they'll say i like that but i could never do that mm-hmm. and there's this story so we unpack that like okay why could you never like that because you it will come out several times and there's so many limiting beliefs and this goes into the piece you mentioned earlier about the weight and the age yes this comes up all the time so There's so many limiting beliefs there. And when we're looking at photos uh, to get ideas every time, well, I could never do that because that woman may have told herself for the last 10 years, somebody my age couldn't do that. Couldn't pull that off. Couldn't pull that off. What would other people think of me if they saw me, a 50 year old woman wearing that? And And you know what's crazy? The wearing that is never like, a bikini or like a crop top or something like that. It's, it's something that, you know, on the outside, absolutely. Of course, like that's within the realm of reason that there's no reason you could not wear that. But for her, it's so real because that story, that narrative has been there for so long. She's carried it and it's heavy. And that's the piece that needs to get unpacked first. So I love this idea of just looking at what other people are doing and giving ourselves permission, like, oh, there are other women out there that are owning it, that, you know, they're dressing completely for themselves. Yes. And they're embodying it. One of the things that I'm moving into, just because I study so much about archetypes and the power of them, is to choose like, a few iconic women whose mm-hmm. style you love. Yes. Yes. Um, and I don't want to say copy them because they are never going to be, right. it's not, but, but loosely, I, I think that can be part yes. of that gathering and discovery it totally process can. to find, yeah. you know, cause yeah. I love like Jacqueline Kennedy on yeah. style, even mm-hmm. though it's like a t- classic mm-hmm. timeless. Mm-hmm. And I also love this whole um, vibe of, you know, just that loose fitting flowing clothing that you see like, anyway, so I, I could, I guess you could say like Grace Kelly or something. I'm I'm choosing women from like the 1950s and sixties. And I'm like, why am I? And and I, I really do struggle with a lot of the current styles. Um, yeah, for me, it feels like sometimes we choose, we look at the models and we look at what they're wearing and, and sometimes we don't, that's why I love that there's more plus size. Yes. Um, do you yeah. recommend that people find, um, styles or maybe companies or whatever that have their body type more yeah, or is so that? I'm so glad you brought this up because this is a huge challenge. So I will show women clothing or references. And unfortunately, as you're saying, most companies are using models that are not representative of what 99.9% of women look like. And so for a woman who's not so accustomed to this practice, she's looking at that photo and she's thinking, I cannot see myself. Like that doesn't Mm -hmm. look like me. How could I ever imagine myself wearing that if I'm looking at somebody that doesn't look like me? Um, I'll usually cut the head, like the cut it at the neck. So at least the face isn't visible, but the body, you know, it's completely different. So I would recommend seeing, like trying to find places that have women that look more representative of an everyday woman. But to be completely honest, those are somewhat few and far between. There's more of them than there used to be, but there's not enough. There's not, there's not, you know, you have that beautiful full body goddess, you know, sort of body type. And then you have, you know, more of the, I just think of these two words, ectomorph and endomorph that Mm -hmm. I learned in college. I can't get out of my brain. Mesomorph, like really, really thin, really, really full body somewhere in between. I'm kind of somewhere in between. Yeah. Um, but you know, what's interesting is when I was coaching a lot with image consulting and beauty and yeah. pageantry and things like that, um, 
you know, the gown was always the thing. Like your gown, okay. what gown you chose was like wow. everything. Yeah. And um, I remember I was coaching this lady who um, I, I was with her actually where she, when she was trying on gowns and the lady who owned the gown shop chose like three and I chose three and we just, that we thought would look good on her and we put them on the thing. And I kind of knew her energy type. So she looked at this and I was like, this is good, probably going to look so good on her. So she's like, no, I don't. I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. So it was the last thing she tried on because she just didn't think she would like it. Yeah. And she tried it on and everyone, like <sighs> everyone dropped their jaw. Like, oh my God, she actually wasn't, what's interesting is she wasn't completely drawn to it, but something happened when she put it on. Yeah. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. So how does, what, tell me about, like, if it's supposed to be an intuitive process, we don't always get it. <laughs> No, because we're so, we're so accustomed to choosing what we choose. Mm. So that's why a lot of people will say like, I have 10 of the same sweater that look a little, you know, they're all <laughs> the same, but they look slightly different. Yes. We're so accustomed to choosing what we choose. And the internal dialogue is very strong. So for her, she's never, you know, of course she's not wearing gowns every day, but even that particular style was something about it was different than what she would choose even as it relates to more everyday clothes and yeah she couldn't see it the disc there was a disconnect she couldn't see it for herself because it's outside of her familiarity and oftentimes as somebody in this kind of job who helps people with this it's your job to let people see themselves in that way. And oftentimes it doesn't, it, I mean, always it doesn't happen until it's put on mm -hmm. because you see it either in a photo or hanging there. And that story is there. Like I wouldn't wear that. Somebody who looks like me couldn't do that or mm -hmm. whatever that might be. And it's not until it's put on that, that transformation happens. I got chills as you said it, because I see it in my clients and it's such a magnificent moment to see mm -hmm. somebody come into something that they, and see themselves in a way mm -hmm. that they've never seen themselves before. Yeah. And I think if we do away with all the rules, like, totally. oh, I can't wear this because I totally. don't look good in yellow yeah. or whatever. To or, yes. you know, people yeah. don't wear white shoes after memorial. I don't know. All, <laughs> all of the rules are even just, you know, I only wear, I, I have clients say it all the time. Like I, my body only allows me to wear a shirt that covers my bum or something, you right, know, right. I won't look at a sh I won't look at any shirt that doesn't cover my bum. Cause there's no way that it could look good on me. Yeah. All these, you know, all these kind of things that we're trying to confine to, but then I always say, just try and maybe it won't work. And sometimes it doesn't, but sometimes it does. Yeah. And, and then there always, is like, it's hard because, you know, a lot of, I'll see something online. I'll order it. I yeah. haven't tried it on, obviously. So you order it because it looks so good. And then I try yeah. it on or the color and the fabric. And I'm like, ah, oh. so one of the things I've started to do recently is um, there's this place here in Utah called Uptown Cheapskate. And it's like secondhand clothes. It's a lot of yeah. them are designer clothes that people mm -hmm. have worn and whatever. And then, and then they turn them in. And yeah. I put a lot of my clothes in there because mm -hmm. I'm sick of them. And I'll just go and I'll look for all the racks and they're literally like five dollars ten dollars and so um and those to be and, and i kind of experiment like like doing that instead of ordering like the big yeah. expensive thing online yeah. first i'm like huh i'm not used to wearing this style a lot but yeah. i wonder what it would look like yeah so anyway i, I would i, I love that, exercise. that. If, if we get stuck in those like you said the inner dialogue it you know, dressing beautifully is too expensive. Yeah. It takes too much time. Yeah. Um, you know, I would just, I would just say like, you're worth the investment. This, the body, you, your body yeah. is the only thing that you go everywhere with. <laughs> you are, you are. It, it's like, I say, it's like your best friend. It's the, you know, it's the closest person to you. It takes you everywhere. Mm. Um, it's worth, it is worth doing it. And it doesn't need to be, as you said, at a, at a high price point, there's ways to do it without investing a lot of money. And once you've done that, those first few steps of the inner piece, you know, the time component doesn't become as extensive later on because you already know, like I'm already having this dialogue with myself. I already know what, you know, kind of where I'm drawn to. I can pay attention to that more. So the time component doesn't need to be there as much either. Yeah. So 
I really want us, well, I want you to share your experience of a client that you had that was getting ready to meet the president. Was it Obama or? It was. Yeah, it was Obama. <laughs> I want you to share that because I, I, I love that story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this was, She's a perfect example of what we've been talking about here because this was a client who uh, was very, very top of her field in finance. And she was referred by somebody else, but she was very resistant because she had held on to a lot of, you know, limiting stories about her body uh, style. She had also been holding on to what we were talking about earlier, that maybe the outside piece wasn't as integral. Um, she was so successful that the inner stuff, she felt like, you know, I've achieved so much in my life. I don't need to worry about the outside stuff. The inside stuff should speak for itself. And she was very resistant to working together and I just you know allowed that to happen I allowed her to have the space to make the decision on her own and I think it was about six months before she ever went through with her with her project but she called one day and she said uh, she was needing to meet the president and for work and she was also going to be speaking next to Bill Gates. I think there was only eight, eight people attending. Bill Gates was one of them. She was the only woman attending. And she recognized that she needed the external piece to pull everything together and feel like she was on the same, I don't want to say level, but like she commanded the same amount of power. Yeah. And that wasn't through the clothing at all that was through the mindset so it was the alignment of the inner and the outer and so we brought we we service our clients in their homes so we brought everything to her a huge huge selection of clothing for her to choose from and she tried a lot of stuff on and stuff was working but she wasn't having that aha moment like you said about the girl that you were working with with the gowns and then it was about an hour in that she put something on and she had it. And you see it in somebody's eyes when it happens. There's just this transformation. And she said, like, yeah, this is it. And she said, I feel like the first female president of the United mm -hmm. States. And, you know, it wasn't something extremely expensive or I think the pants were from Banana Republic. And it wasn't about the clothing specifically. It was about when she put it on, like, this is me. Right. And she went and she wrote me from her meeting and she just said, like, I'm I'm ready. I'm here. I'm 100 percent. I feel exactly the way I need to feel for this. And so I think that, you know, that's really what it comes down to. Like for a lot of women, we may not be so invested in shopping or style or we don't pay attention to that in the same way other women do. I mean, I work in this industry and I don't really care about it the same way some of my friends do even but what's important is that piece of aligning the two and being able to step out into the world and like yes this is me and I own this and I feel 100 percent that's a beautiful place for us to wrap up and I just thinking that song from the greatest showman this is me yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know that song, yeah but, I do <laughs> um yeah I mean so put that song on ladies walk yes. into your you know gather get in your skin get in your body yes. connect to your breath get in your body pay attention to the that inner dialogue that's going mm -hmm. on what's look at your closet and really ask yourself is this me Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, making an adventure, a discovery, yeah. gather, yeah. gather images that speak to you and, and clothes and colors that you love and styles and fabrics and, and just dive into that beautification process. And I, I want to say one other thing. I, I have this permission to shine CD um, that I created when I was trying to give myself permission. Yeah. I, created, I created it for others, but I was like, no, I'm giving myself this permission. Yeah. Um, it's called permission to shine. And it's like a 90 minute audio that I created when I was Ugh. in that journey. And, yeah. and um, cause I had so many women coming to me and they're like, oh, you're so inspiring because you're doing this pageant and drill stuff. And, yeah. and like, you're still like, spiritual and I'm like well they're the same thing the same they're not the same. In, you know, or in odds with no. each other like they're it's a spiritual practice to it is. mourn and beautify yeah. yourself yes so I would always turn that scripture back to them um because you know people can bible bash at you and get right. really ugly it's I like um imagine. you or your body is a temple 
Yeah. Oh, yes. And most most religions have like synagogues or temples or churches that they adorn and they beautify. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they spend money on that. They invest in it because they realize that aesthetically you can cultivate spiritual aspects of yourself and community when things are beautified. Yeah. And so I was just like putting it out there like, Hey, but, but I think what you and I are both conscious of, and you touched on this is that we don't want this to be one more thing that no. women aren't doing right. And no. come on, ladies, get it together. Are you no. frump? You know, <laughs> no, we don't That's, want it to, we don't no. want to there. So how do you, let's kind of wrap up with like, what, what would you say to a woman who maybe does feel a little stuck yeah. It feels overwhelming, even as mm-hmm. she's hearing us say all this, but she, yeah. in her heart, she desires to, to move into a space where she can feel and look more beautiful. Yeah. I think clothing. I can, I do completely understand that it can feel very overwhelming when you're hearing it like this. And I would say just start. So you don't need to dive in all the way. You don't need to have your style figured out tomorrow. You don't need to know what those clothes are right away. But just start, start paying attention to the dialogue, start just looking at what makes you feel good when you wear it and wearing those things more often. Um, I think when you start to let your mind entertain the ideas and go there and understand that it is just part of your self-love journey, that you make space for it. It doesn't become you know, just another thing that's on the to-do list. It becomes something you get excited about. Mm -hmm. Um, So just give give yourself the permission to start and you will naturally sort it out as you go. Perfect. That's a great place for us to wrap. Thanks so much, Jordan. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much for having me, Cherie. So yeah, giving yourself permission to dress for yourself and not in compliant obedience to the opinions of others. And we do want to look beautiful for other people and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that we need to embody feeling at home in our own skin. And that comes oftentimes with how we adorn ourselves. So don't be afraid to say that this is me. That's going to help with that inner outer alignment. And it is a practice and it does take time to come to where you are dressing as you. You can find Jordan's work on her website, MikadoPersonalityStyling.com. M-I-K-A-D-O, MikadoPersonalityStyling.com. Have a glorious week. And we'll talk to you next time on Women Seeking Wholeness.